Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of The Creative Truth. And today we have our very special guest, one of the co-founders of The Creative Truth, Taraz Misher. What's up? What's up, man? Thanks Chilling, for coming man. on. Yeah, man. I'm glad to be glad to be back. So you're in yeah. downtown Atlanta right now? Is that what what is that? <laughs> Charlotte? No, that's, that, that's actually Charlotte. Yeah. Charlotte? Okay. Yeah, it's a little Atlanta. So um so I guess uh, for the listeners, what's uh, what's the update? Yeah, we so had a I, I, I and we're back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I moved. I COVID hit. I realized that I wanted to be closer to family, um, and that you know Charlotte was closer to family. So I'm in technically in Gastonia, North Carolina. Uh, most people don't know that though; they just know Charlotte. So I say Charlotte. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, we moved home uh, 20 minutes from my dad. Um, t less than that to my sister and niece and uh, an hour to my aunts and uncles. So it's just, uh, it's nice when you have three kids and a crazy busy wife and a crazy busy schedule also that I have, you know, it's just nice being closer to the family. Uh, Charlotte's a, a major airport and major city. So it's easier for, you know, in-laws and people further away to fly in or travel in. So uh, yeah, so we made the move. Cool. What was that event? I, I can't remember what the meetup was, but it was a podcast meetup you did up there. It yes. Like it, yeah, yeah. It was for um podcast, not podfest. Oh man, what was the conference I went to? It was podcast. What's the name of that conference? Why can't I think uh, of it? <laughs> I caught you off guard. Yeah, you did. And I was gonna say podcast movement. Podcast, podcast movement. movement. Yeah, that's right. Up in yeah. Charlotte. And I was going to say, oh, now you can go. You're right there. So you can just go. But but now there's COVID. So it's now probably it's virtual anyway, you know, yeah. or, or push yeah. back a year. So, yeah. but hey, that'll be a good excuse for me to come up there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. On, your, on your way home or way back uh, whenever you're traveling. So what's yeah, the, I, so so technically the meetup was uh, it was a podcast movement like prep pep rally almost, you know, so it just. It was like a representative from the conference came to Charlotte and went to a bunch of other cities and just, uh, you know, gave, uh, sold tickets on discount to the conference, which was really cool. Mm. Uh, and uh, talked about the conference and how good it was. And it was a chance to meet other podcasters locally here in Charlotte as well. So it was, it was actually a really cool, fun event to go to for a podcaster. And so what's the status of Pot on the Go? Pot on the Go is, uh, is still going strong. Uh, the website is up. It's looking good, holding holding it together, moving fast, which is something I've been working on lately. Uh, uh, what about for people that don't know what it is? Yeah, so so pot on the go, elevator uh, pitch. Yeah, yeah. So it is a digital platform for podcast studios uh, to promote and list their studios, so that people can find them and schedule services and contact them. Uh, it's like a Yelp uh, for podcasting studios. Pot on the go. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so uh, before, you know, a year or two ago, all I did was produce podcasts and edit shows and uh, stuff like that. And now I just wanted to create a platform where other podcast studios can, um, you know, communicate with each other and, and make it easier to, for people to find them, find the studios. Yeah, and you're still, uh, you still are producing podcasts for people remotely. And uh, do you have any clients up there yet? Up here, no. But there's a podcast studio here in Gastonia called We Talk. So uh, at some point, once the COVID vaccine is out and everybody's, you know, we're moving in a better direction, we uh, COVID-wise, I'll we, probably check that one out. Uh, it's called We Talk? Yeah. Hmm. I remember when we launched the pod box, the first pod box, or you launched, but we launched it. We Our kind of claim to fame was that we were the first uh, dedicated podcast studio in Savannah. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you can't be beat when you're the only one. <laughs> yeah, but now now there's like I feel like I know of at least four or five. Yeah, that's crazy, right? Yeah. And that's, that's just crazy. in like two years. Yep. 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 And, I'm always ahead of my time. Yeah, and I and I keep getting the like you're know, like, Oh yeah, another millennial with this podcast. Like <laughs> like no no no, we started doing it before COVID hit. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I have the that's right. I have the posts on Podbean and all the podcast platforms to prove it um yep yep the photos the the meetup we did savannah podcast meetup all this mm -hmm, stuff mm -hmm. it's live stream it's just it's, it's the truth so this is something i was i've been thinking about and uh 
and I haven't really actually asked you about it yet, but um, since you aren't from Savannah and now you're not living in Savannah, you can kind of like step back and put like a little bow on your experience here. And uh, I know one thing you said is that you worked really hard networking to meet people here mm -hmm. uh, in Savannah. And uh, so now that you've like came here, built your network, met people, um, built a business, been successful, and now you're, you're starting over in, in a different location. What were some things you would do differently about your time in Savannah if you were to do it again? Um, I would have charged more from the beginning. I did a lot of, I did a lot of free and cheap work, hard work, hours of work, um, for little to nothing in hopes that it would give me bigger contracts and it gave me, you know, into, you know, open doors for me and all this stuff. And it never worked out <laughs> like that. You know, so the people I charged, uh, an appropriate price from the beginning, they ended up becoming my biggest supporters nine times out of 10. Um, but that's, I don't know, I guess that's about it. It's just, you know, the time I spent on some projects, I didn't, uh, I just realized that people didn't value me because I didn't put the price tag where I should have been valued. And some of that's, that's all my fault, you know, just the lack of confidence in myself at the time and the value I provided. Uh, so that's, that's the biggest thing I would have changed. Outside of that, you know, I love Savannah. Savannah is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. People travel there constantly for a reason and every time i would drive to tybee uh i can't remember the name of the road but down that down that road um you 80. know it's just yeah down 80 just seeing the trees on either side seeing the marshlands uh seeing the dolphins uh that was beautiful uh being in richmond hill where i could go fishing all the time had a pond in the back of my house that was beautiful uh everybody was really nice to me i didn't meet a i didn't meet a, a mean person uh yeah, I didn't meet a mean person. Um, yeah, so it was a. Uh, I wouldn't do anything outside of that different. Is just charge more money. So you also like, when I look back on your social media and your and the different projects you're part of, you're kind of uh, you're kind of like me in that you pop around a lot. Um, yeah. You had uh, you had a radio show. So what I'm kind of interested in is how did that progress? Like when you first got here. What were some of the first organizations you got involved with to meet people? And then how did like one connection maybe lead to the next? And then you started the radio show and you met somebody there and, and Savannah, you kind of get to be a part of the network. You realize yeah. that everyone knows everyone. So what was that kind of progression for you? Uh, briefly, um, I Googled uh, entrepreneur events in Savannah. Um, the creative coast popped up. I went to that, first that was the it was like we got to savannah and moved into our town home on a monday i think that wednesday i went to a seven cups or whatever i can't remember the actual name of the event but it's like a a little business pitch event that they used to do every wednesday i went to that the first wednesday i was in town i met three people there and i met kate kate lance who's still with the creative coast she left and came back yeah and i shot a she, video with her yesterday yeah yeah beautiful because like she told me about WRUU, which is the radio station that was starting up and they will. And so I looked them up and they were looking for volunteers and I said, okay, I'll volunteer and I'll do a radio show. And at first I was doing it twice a week. No, I did it once a week for a couple months. Then I amped it up to twice a week, every Monday and Wednesday. And I did that for close to a year. And then I, then I ran back down once my business picked up, but I just did that with, no, and you know, I had no business idea, no business plan. And I just did my radio show and I just reached out to people. I found, I reached out to Marjorie Young randomly on LinkedIn hmm. and we hit it off immediately. And then she introduced me to a ton of people because she's one of the most well-connected people in Savannah. I uh, just so, did a Zoom call with her on Tuesday and I just yeah. met, this is the first time I ever met her and I, I gave really? you a little, I name dropped you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my girl. She was definitely one of my mentors for sure. And I went to, from there also, another thing I did is I went to a um, business event called, uh, what's the business event I used to go to hardcore? BNI? BNI. Yeah, I went to a BNI event and Tom Kinkle was the president. We hit it off. We became great friends. And uh, Carolyn 
Williams was there and we hit it off. We became great friends and she entered, they both introduced me to a ton of people. So that's, that's really it, man. Just, that's how I connected, you know, because when you, when you host a podcast or a radio show or anything along that nature, like you have a chance to uh, really dive deep with a person and get to know them in a way that most people don't like everything is so superficial now. Uh, you know, Twitter is however many words and we have to keep things short and quick. And if you listen to a regular radio show, it's just like super fake, super superficial because there's only so much they can say and get away with on the radio. They want to speak to the most, you know, be, uh, you know, listened to by the most amount of people. So they keep everything really general. Mm. Uh, so when you have a radio show, it's just a one-on-one conversation with the person and you're trying to get to know them. You're learning about their business. It's an opportunity for, for them to promote themselves, but it's also an opportunity for them to really think through some things if you ask the right questions. Anyway, yeah, that's it. You know, I did a radio show. I hit it off with a lot of people. I talked to people for, you know, 45 minutes to an hour about themselves, and, and then they introduced me to other people because it's like a cathartic experience when you really talk to a person. Yeah, and I think like the go-to is to ask people out for coffee and then you're like, you accept and you're like, all right, I'll go figure right. out what I have in common with this person. And you don't, there's no real agenda. It's just kind of like you're going out for coffee and you see if you, if you, yeah. if you vibe well. But, I, you know, when you, when, you, when you interview somebody, they get to talk about their favorite subject, which is them. You know, people love <laughs> right. to talk about themselves, yeah. myself yeah. included. And, um, and there's an agenda and you're going to get to drive that agenda a little bit because you're the host. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it is kind of a different approach to getting to meet people and network with people. And I still will actually, um, I just met Bryn Grant from the United Way for the first time a couple of weeks ago. Cool. So here, here's what's happening. All that hard work you spent networking. I'm just coming in and picking up the pieces <laughs> after you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, but I, I showed somebody that interview and i actually listened to the full thing for the first time and i was like wow that was a, that was from a couple years ago too a couple yeah. years and uh yeah yeah, yeah was, with brand yeah with brand yeah. yeah yeah it was a great one i mean like we hit it off great because she uh uh she like read a lot of the same books or listened to a lot of the same uh she has like the same motivational mindset philosophy as i do in a lot of ways you know so we just we kind of hit it off there um, there's a few other interviews that are really good. I guess I could share them with you or maybe I should promote them some other way, but some, some people you just, you just hit it off with. There were some, there were some interviews that were just terrible because people want to do their spiel and they're just like trained to be PR, um, robots, you know, and they just direct everything back to the organization and they don't really go deep or they say things that they've heard, uh, Tony Robbins say, or, you know, says so, somebody else like that who just, uh, all about mindset, but nobody really dives deep inside themselves. So every now and then I would reach to reach out to a person and they will open up completely. And that would just be a, you know, that was always an amazing interview for me and them. And you said it's, um, you've told me, or you mentioned it on the creative truth in the past too. There's kind of like a sweet spot. Uh, you say like 40 minutes for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why it's not, it doesn't make any sense, but it's a, usually around 40 minutes when, things really dive deep. Maybe that's when, maybe that's just the, the number that, you know, a person can't hold up their shield anymore. You know, they, the, the wall crumbles. And yeah, they, they can do know, 30 minutes small talk, but 40 yeah. minutes, they run out of stuff to say. Or <laughs> that's right. And they have to, they have to be honest at that point. You know, maybe at 40 minutes is when like, you know, most prisoners or people that have been interrogated, maybe that's when they break down, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, but we yeah, need some a, uh some scientific uh research here I think. yeah 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 but that's that's it's crazy like that's that's when it happens even even when i've been interviewed by people it's usually around like 40 minutes when there's like i wouldn't say a breakthrough but when like we really connect for some reason what are yeah. some of the questions you always i know you've got a couple like signature questions you ask people yeah 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 so my first one that i always open up with uh and i got the idea of it from an interview with Tim Ferriss. His name was, I can't think of the guy's name. Anyway, but anyway, he interviewed uh, Putin or Gorbachev or somebody like that in Russia uh, for, for it was either not Time Magazine, anyway, for a popular magazine. And he said, Cal Newport was his name, I think. 
fuck. Take that out. That might be wrong. <laughs> you can if you want to or not, whatever. Anyway, he basically said that, you know, you have to get to a person's like heart first and then everything else will open up, you know? So you have to like evoke some type of emotion with your first question. And my first question is this, is that, you know, if you are, you walk through your neighborhood, a little kid comes up to you and says, Tyler, you're my hero. How can I be like you when I grow up? And in the language that a 10 or 12 year old can understand, what does it take to be Tyler Edick? And usually that gets people out of their comfort zone. It's more of a deeper question. Uh, and people, you know, have to think on the level of a, a child. So they say something simple versus something really, you know, out there what some people tend to do just so they sound smarter or whatever, you know, or sound like bigger than they are. You have to say something really simple and that's a hard thing to do for some people. So they have to really think about it. Um, and it also, it's like, you know, it's, it's a possible scenario, you know, that you could be walking through your neighborhood and maybe you're so famous and maybe you've done something for the little kid and they really admire you and they want to be like you when you, when you grow up. That's kind of everybody's dream, like to do something big enough, you know, that a kid wants to be like them. Yeah, versus having everyone else like kissing your ass, you know, when it's like maybe not deserved or whatever. Right. Yeah. Right. Because the kid, the kids have no filter. I mean, they just say it how they see it, pretty much. Absolutely. You ever think about how you'd answer that? Like, what? What about for you? How did anyone ever ask you that? Um, nobody's ever asked me that. Uh, but I would probably just tell them to keep going, and you'll figure it out at some point. <laughs> Cause I don't know the answer, but that's kind of, that's what I do. That's what keeps it. That's, that's what happens. Is I just keep going like Thomas, the engine, like I'll jump from one thing to the next, but I never stop. You could call it fake it till you make it or just be persistent or whatever. You just keep yeah. trying stuff, see what sticks. Yeah. Even if I don't, I don't like fake it till you make it too much because I don't like being fake. Yeah. You know? So it's, it's that's that's a hard turn for me as well because I don't like I don't like to fake anything. It's, it feels greasy and grimy whenever I'm not myself. So, but I understand I understand it. You know that's why rappers who are broke and poor, you know, have stacks of money that they're talking to talking to you know what I'm saying on videos or riding in cars or mm. have a ton of guys with guns around them, and, you know, or whatever because they want to have the illusion of being wealthy and successful and powerful. Uh, even even when they're not and it's funny not. maybe it maybe i maybe i am okay with my fake side a little bit more but with the way the way i think of it when i hear fake it till you make it is when people say hey can you live stream this or can you you know uh i don't know hang out of this helicopter and and <laughs> shoot this whatever yeah even if it's something i've never done before I'll say, yes, I can do it um, because I have the confidence in myself to to learn how to do it. Right. Even if I right. haven't done it before. So that's how I think of it. I don't think of it as. A no, but then, thing. but then that's not faking it. You know what I mean? Like then that's just, you know, I have the skills. I might have to Google something. You yeah. know what I'm saying? To make <laughs> that's sure. most of the job. Yeah. <laughs> I might have to Google something to figure it out. On the way there the at, at the red light. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like if somebody said, I'll give you a million dollars to jump out of this helicopter and do a thousand black backflips and land perfectly. Like you couldn't do that. Like you would legit be faking it. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You'd know pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. But you have the skills to, you know how to, you, if they ask you anything about videography, you can handle it. Yeah. Or something related to what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. But yes, I know how to figure stuff out. Mm -hmm. So, and you're good at that, too. Mm -hmm. um, so then, yeah. And then you didn't even uh, touch on the Savannah JCs, but that's another service organization that's actually an international organization. That's correct. Yeah. And that came from uh, Marjorie as well. She Is that right? recommended I join it. Yeah. Hmm. And I took her advice and it, it worked out great. Yeah. Met a lot of cool people. Got to... Uh, uh, lead some projects. I got to um, help a lot of people be a, like meet some new people. Like the portions of hula hoops event we did was really fun. Um, got involved with the, you know, men not mentally disabled, but I don't know. I don't know what they, uh, there's D different differently abled and they change it. Yeah, yeah. Differently abled 
They yeah. change for different people. Some people say differently able. Some people say, you know, mentally disabled. Some people say different different abilities. All you know, saying all that stuff. So I don't want to offend anybody with that. But I was in the community and I enjoyed every minute of it. Doing the horses and hula hoops event, doing the uh, planning at uh, Kicklider Academy. We you know built a raised bed garden there. A couple of them uh, wanted to go back at some point, but never had a chance to. But yeah, just stuff like that. You know, so it was it was just like a, it was cool to, you know, get in a paper, get a newspaper locally and, uh, you know, as a leadership member of the team and all this stuff. And also just meet some cool people. Met a lot of friends uh, with the JCs. Yeah, including you. Including you. Yeah, yeah. Including yeah you. that's where we met. Yeah. Yeah. And then we launched uh, we launched the Creative Truth in the spring of 19, I think. I think it was like April or May of 2019. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so keeping it going. Well, yeah, so that's what I was going to say. It's, I guess, a little segue. This one, this episode is going to be the first episode. This video is going to come out in the beginning of February 2021. Nice. And nice. Uh, so, uh, so if you're listening, this is actually recorded in uh, December of 2020. Uh, we, we went on a little hiatus with uh, both of Raz and my schedule getting pretty busy. And mm -hmm. then with him moving away, uh, we weren't really sure of the future, but we knew we would always be collaborating on on video projects and podcast yeah. projects. So, so, uh, but rather than just letting it sit, I decided, okay, I'm going to move this to more of a interview type uh, podcast, and uh, which is something we talked about, uh, you know, when we were doing it regularly um, last year. And we just, with our schedules, it's just so hard to, for us mm -hmm. to collaborate and then to us also find a guest. So I'm right. just going to keep it going. And uh, anytime you want to come on co-host, host your own episode, you want to be a guest. I mean, we're, we'll see how it just evolves, but uh, right. yeah, we, I, I, however it plays out, I'm just going to keep cranking out episodes so people yeah. can, uh, and, and, you know, it's going to have um I think some reach beyond Savannah mm -hmm. um, for people that are either of course not based here or have careers that uh, expand outside of this community. But then within the Savannah community, there are so many creative people yeah. doing creative work and supporting themselves with uh, art or, or other creative entrepreneurial ventures that there's not going to be a shortage of people I can I can talk to. So, Correct. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so what about you is, uh, remind me of the name of your, are you, you show? Oh, it was the Savannah business showcase. Okay. So people could find past episodes of that on, on YouTube. Yeah. So it's, there's a lot on YouTube. Um, I might start adding some more to the new podcast. I'm going to bring back at some point called the Razzcast. Okay. That was my next question. Mm -hmm. The Razzcast. Yeah, it's coming back. I have uh, three interviews recorded. Uh, at some point, I'm going to interview you, um, and that's going to be that's going to be a lot. You know, it's going to be like Joe Rogan's podcast, I think, in a way, because I'll do just straight up interviews. But I also want to do a a segment of it. He does like the uh, the fight companion, um, but I want to do like the grits podcast as well and mm. call it the grits segment. Guys raised in the South, where it's just like me and a bunch of guys talking shit basically which is also uh kind of a callback to another podcast you had worked on for a while there right yeah 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 it was uh called three men talk yeah definitely definitely a callback we did like six or seven episodes and it was fun and uh it looked it was like it was like it was tinted really bad because it, this this room was painted red so all the cameras like had this strong red tint mm. uh and it looked a lot like rogan's bad studio now oh yeah <laughs> yeah look the studio now. he said it's just temporary i think oh okay yeah, yeah. it looks like i hope so yeah uh uh yeah no and the creative truth i think i told you this at one point in like i don't know five years ago i had an idea to go to do something called conversations with creatives and i actually okay. interviewed my friend but that was before temmy and it was before you could you know easily transcribe audio to text and i didn't know how i didn't know what i mean i think i knew what podcasts were but i had no interest in listening to them so mm -hmm. i was going to make it into a blog post turn it into text and then make it a blog post but um yeah. i just 
never did anything with it. But now that I'm like, oh, I can just talk to people and turn that into an audio file and, and share that with the world. I'm mm -hmm. actually going to have that same friend of mine back on the podcast because he's a really, really talented photographer. And I, oh, I, nice. I kind of owe it to him because he, I, yeah. you know, he spent two hours talking to me five years ago and I never did oh, anything man. with it. So <laughs> two hours. Jesus yeah, Christ. it was a long one. It was a long episode. Yeah. <laughs> or, I mean, it wasn't an episode, but it was yeah. just, an, it was just an idea, but it's funny how like, you know, for the entrepreneurial minded, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's coming up with an idea is the easy part. It's the mm -hmm. follow through and it's the consistency. That's the hard part. We have ideas yeah. all day. We, yeah. especially you, you more so than me, you're like, <laughs> you won't even believe what I'm on to this week. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm always surprised. Yeah. Yeah. So what's, uh, so on that subject, what's 2021 going to hold for you? Uh, 2021 is gonna hold a lot of content creation. Um, like all of last year just ended up being uh, just craziness, you know. But like between COVID, uh, we moved to a new studio where where you are now from the original studio. We uh, we didn't have a kid, but we had a, a infant in the home. You know what I mean? We had two other kids that one was homeschooling. I had a, a client that took up you know, four and a half to five hours a day um, doing work for him. So I literally, I had a job for a little bit, you know what I mean? Like I literally didn't have any time uh, to do anything for myself. You know, they say you should, uh, it's the E-Myth uh, book, which is a great book for anybody out there listening to read, especially if you're a creative. Second. Uh, yeah. Is, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, you have to work on your business and you have to work in your business, you know? So you have to, actually do the work but you also have to push the business forward and that's what i was forgetting to do is to push the business forward you know through creating content for myself you know i was doing all this stuff for other people but i wasn't creating anything for myself so i'm going to do you know i'll be helping with the creative truth whenever you need me whenever you have me uh whenever we decide to get together i will be doing the rascast cast which where i interview people and i'm also going to do something for pot on the go in my 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 cool studio here I don't think I can zoom out anymore, but you know, I'll show people how I zoom in. This this is like the coolest thing. Just like that, you know, like how cool is the studio? <laughs> it is cool. That's a super hey. zoom. Hey. And for our listeners, he's, uh, he's in a virtual studio with a green screen backdrop with his logo up and he's able to push in and out with, yeah. the, with, the, with the mixer. With the click of a mouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I'll be doing some cool stuff with that. This logo back here behind me, I can play videos. I can put up photos. I can, uh, you know, switch in and out of um, all kinds of cool stuff. And it's all with, whoops, wrong one. It's all with uh, uh, software, software called vMix. You know, so I can bring the, the logo in close. I can bring it out. I can have videos back there playing, which you just saw briefly. Um, or maybe, I don't know if you heard it because of the, the way I have it set up, but you know, so it's, it's, it's going to be pretty cool. I'm excited to try some things out. Why do you think, um, why do you think podcasts are really like popping off right now? Other than the fact that people are stuck at home. I mean, there's gotta be something to them that there's so many being produced right now. Um, I would say this, I think it's a lot of reasons. I don't think I can remember everything that just went through my head in a flash. Uh, but one reason I think is cell phones. Uh, that was a, that was a big rise of it uh, originally, you know, because podcasts were around technically, you know, people were just uploading audio tracks to their website to be pretty listen to, but with the mobility and of podcasts and the ease of podcasts through iTunes, it just makes it a lot uh, easier for people to listen to it anywhere, everywhere at all times. Um, Another reason is that uh, they're financially viable now. You know, if you can build a following that loves you, really all you need is a thousand true fans. You don't need a, a million people like a radio show does. You just need a thousand true fans. And if you can find those with a the podcast, then you can potentially make a million dollars with just a thousand fans that who really, like, really, really love you. You know, and it's all types of different ways to monetize it. Uh, and that's become easier. You know, whether it's affiliate links or creating your own product or you know just advertising on a popular channel 
or creating eBooks and selling t-shirts and doing live events. Not so much now, but there's all types of ways to monetize a podcast. So people are seeing it as a, as a business opportunity and not just a hobby anymore. So that's a big thing. Um, and also, I don't know, like just, it's just spoken word. So that, that I think spoken word means something like before, uh, televisions and, uh, the internet that was radio, you know, and that the people would like, you know, the spoken word has always been there before radio. There was, uh, that's, that's how tribes and our ancestors passed down history. It was like just oral history. So like the spoken word and communication is just ingrained in the human, you know, genome or whatever, you know? So it's, it's just something primal about hearing a person speak or he listen to a great story. Like no matter, like everybody knows the, the makeup of a story. Like there's the, the heroes, uh, what is it? A thousand heroes or the hero with a thousand faces, uh, that book, that concept. And it, uh, it's basically every story is the same story. You know, uh, uh, there's a main character. They tell a little bit about his past and his situation as it, you know, the, the place he's in now. And then something crazy happens. His parents die and he leaves home. He meets new friends. He goes through all his trials. He finds a mentor. And then after the mentor, the mentor shows him his true path. He meets new friends and people along the way. He solves a problem, saves the city. And then he's the, the hero. You know, it's, that's the same story, no matter what you do. That's Star Wars, that is, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings, that is Harry Potter. That's every great story. So, in, like, listening to a story is, like, really ingrained in the human psyche. And we want to hear it over and over and over again, even if it's the same story. You know, so that's why, that's why it's booming. And just, you know, the more people hear about podcasts, the more people share it, the more it's going to grow. Yeah, that you just made me think of something random but um but also related and that is uh why why us guys just love barbecue and uh i, I remember watching a, a video or a, a youtube or a netflix show or something about this but it's like the idea is it's meat over a flame you know at its at yeah. its core yeah. it's like the earliest form of cooked prepared food yeah and so like there's just something about it that's just like primal and yeah. you know we've been doing it for thousands of years so it's just like <laughs> yeah. smoked meats like you can't go wrong <laughs> that's right yeah and we just just flip the burger and grunt that's yeah, all you gotta exactly. do. <laughs> yeah 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 and that's a good time <laughs> yeah exactly we're happy you know yeah so um yeah. even that even like when we go camping you know like the best part is starting a fire you know what yeah. I mean? they, 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 like, it's mesmerizing it yeah. yeah and what do we yeah. do we tell stories around the fire too that's right Yep. That's right. Yeah, and I think it's cool because I saw uh, the other day, I saw a virtual fire where they actually had little sparks coming up the bottom of the screen like this. Mm -hmm. And there was a musician playing live on Facebook. And um, yeah, COVID has kind of, kind of forced some of the things we've been talking about societally, like how there's going to be no more office place and how everyone's going to work remote and have flexible hours and all of these you know, the pod, podcast world is still kind of the Wild West, yeah, but it's, be, it's becoming more, reg, not regulated, but normalized. So mm -hmm. people are, are realizing that it's more feasible to do it as a career rather than just a hobby, yeah. like you said. Yeah. Um, so just opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. And we could look at COVID. I mean, of course, COVID was a setback in a lot of ways, and we could look at it as a setback, but it's up to us to find the uh, it's us, up to us as podcasters storytellers entrepreneurs to find the opportunity yeah. in what is otherwise like a terrible situation so mm -hmm. so yeah well it'll be interesting to see what uh what, what springs out of it but yeah. um uh i was wondering if you happen to have a moment of truth i do have a moment of truth and it's something i've been thinking about recently i heard it on a I can't remember what it was I was listening to, uh, some YouTuber, but it has sparked something in me, and I think it's valuable for creatives. And basically, I know what I was listening to. I was listening to a, a Star Wars comic reading on YouTube. <laughs> so crazy. Uh, anyway, clearly. All right. Yeah, he's got uh, a Star Wars shirt on for the listeners. Yeah. Um, anyway, it was basically like, don't, don't create anything. Whenever you create something, it should 
spark emotion in people when they see it. And as a creator, that should be your number one goal. You know, don't just create something and, and copy something and do a bunch of, you know, Picasso drawings because that was already Picasso. People already know the emotion. You know, people already have that emotion stored for Picasso. Create something that's going to spark emotion, you know? That's, you know, whether it's joy or happiness or sadness or fear or anger. Like, everything you create should spark some type of emotion. Otherwise, it's not, I don't think it's art. You know, it's not, it's not creative. It's not worth it. What have you done if it's not making people feel something? So I think that's, that's, that's the moment of truth is you always want to make people feel something with everything you do. Like after you finish your art, after you finish your edit, after you finish editing a podcast or editing a video or painting a photo, you should step back and look and say, will this make anybody feel anything? You know, what does this make me feel? Will this spark joy in someone? Will this spark anger in someone? Will this make somebody feel awkward or weird? or un, un, uncomfortable. And then if it, if it doesn't, you should scrap it and start over or you should make the edits to make it, to make that happen. That's the moment of truth. I like that. And, and uh, even if it does make people feel uneasy or fearful or, or sad, it's still something people are going to talk about, you know? Yes. You got to be able to, you know, even if it's not a good feeling, if that's part of the story you're trying to tell, because that's life. Life isn't all just happy, good things all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, that's a great moment of truth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, uh, unless you have anything else, uh, where, can, uh, where can people find you? Podonthego.com, or you can email me at raz, R-A-Z-Z, at podonthego.com. Okay. Cool. Oh, and I forgot my little plug for uh, Creative Truth. So here we go. Uh, let's see. Upcoming episodes of the Creative Truth are going to include more conversations with other creative career paths like artists, woodworkers, glass blowers, photographers, and more. Uh, please subscribe if you're watching on YouTube or leave us a good review on your favorite podcast platform. You can send us episodes for guests and for the podcast to wecreatetruth at gmail.com. And you can visit us and learn more at creative-truth.com, which I pointed over here, but actually it's over here. It's creative-truth.com to learn more. Okay, thanks for listening.